Hello everyone, in today's edition of Classroom Digital Tools, we're going to take a close look at how to begin your Google Classroom. So, let's get started. When you are setting up Google Classroom for the first time, the first thing that you want to do is click on the Google Apps Cube in the top right hand corner of your work email. After clicking upon that Google Apps Cube, you should see an app that says Classroom in the lower right. An alternative way to access Google Classroom is to open up a tab and in the URL address, you can type in classroom.google.com. And that will likewise take you to Google Classroom. Clicking on the app icon here for Classroom, you can see that I am currently a member of two different classrooms. To create your own classroom, click on the plus sign near the top of the screen. You then have the option to join a class or create a class. In the Johnston County School System, there is a failsafe in place to prevent students from being able to create a class. In other words, if you are a teacher and you have previously joined a class before ever creating one, this option for creating a class may not appear. If that is your situation, you will need to contact someone at the county office to re-enable this access for you. Other school districts, however, may not have that safeguard and therefore this may not pose a hurdle for their teachers. Go ahead and click on Create Class and in the top line here, you will go ahead and enter in the name of your class. For this example, I'm going to type in the name of the club that I sponsor. So future best-selling authors. You can enter in a section here, for example, block one. This is optional though. And you can also enter in the subject area. Section information can be very useful if you teach more than one block of the same class or more than one section of the same class. That way you're less likely to get the different sections confused under the general heading. For this example, I'm going to enter in English. And you can see that different options begin auto-populating. Well, I'm going to keep it simply as English. I'm going to click off to the side here, and then I'm going to click on Create. And it is in the process of creating the class. And here we go. Upon first creating a class, Google will supply you with helpful information. For example, over here, this box appeared that says Create Announcements, Assignments, and Questions for your class Anything you post appears on the class stream. And I'm going to click on Got It. The next thing I'm going to do is change the theme because I do not like this image of a frog. So I'm going to click on Select Theme. And you can see a wide variety of themes that are available that you can use in the background. If none of these pictures appeal to you, you can also select from patterns. And here you have a wide variety of abstract patterns that you can use as the banner for your Google Classroom page. I'm going to go back to gallery and I'm going to select one of these pictures as my theme. And for this example, I'm going to choose on the library shelf of books. 
After clicking on my theme choice, I then click on Select Class Theme, and it has now changed. I can also upload a photo. Just click on Upload Photo, and you can either drag a photo into this area or you can select a photo from your computer. And I'm going to try this picture of myself on horseback. So I'm going to double click on this picture, wait for it to upload, and it turns out the photo you uploaded is too small. It must be at least 800 pixels wide and 200 pic pixels tall. So let's find another one. I'm going to select a photo from my computer, go over to pictures, and then I'm going to open one of these folders. Double clicking on this folder. I am then going to go over to camera media, set one, scroll down, and I'm going to find a photo that's more in landscape. So let's try this one. And again, it's uploading. Alright, so now it gives me the option to crop the image. So I can expand this here. But notice that there are size limits. So I'm going to keep it as this right here, and then I click on Select Class Theme. And now it has changed again. If I change my mind about the theme, it's very easy to fix. Just go back to select the theme and click on the desired image once again. It may seem that I'm spending a lot of time discussing how to change the theme, but understand that this is the first impression that your students and their parents or guardians will get of your Google Classroom. So the next thing is, how do we go about sharing this with the community. Go up and click on students. And here it says choose if students can post and or comment on the class stream. You can also mute individuals. I'm going to click on got it. And I can click on this arrow here to choose which option I want for students. Like only teachers can post or comment, students can only comment, and students can post and comment. For this example, I'm going to choose that students can only comment. Up here you see the class code. I'm going to click on copy. So the class code is copied. And then I can go over here and click on invite students. And I can proceed to invite students one by one by typing in their email address. But considering that you may have, let's say, three classes of 35 students each, this could take a while. You could still go ahead and do this and click on invite when you're done and then student will receive an email inviting them to the class. But it's rather time consuming to do this. A much easier way to get students enrolled in your Google Classroom is to simply share with them the class code. You can write this class code on the whiteboard in your room, you can include it in your syllabus, or you can place it on your teacher webpage. You can also share your Google Classroom to your students, parents, and guardians. Click on this slider over here and it says add class to guardian email summaries. Guardians will receive a summary of their students' work and class announcements. See an example. And right here is an example of what a guardian would see. It shows assignments that student has not completed. It shows future assignments. It shows class activity from the previous week. 
and this is one really great way to communicate with your parents. Now I'm going to click on add a class. The next thing that I am going to do is add a description of my class. And I do that by clicking on the tab up here that says about. Here I can go ahead and enter in a class description. Future best-selling authors is a reading and creative writing club designed to support student interest in literature. I can optionally add information about when the class meets, and then when I am done, I click on Save. If I decide to change what I had entered, I can click on these three dots here off to the right, and then click on Edit. I can also add class materials. Simply click on this white text box here, and then I can add an attachment something from my Google Drive, a video, or a website link. For this example, I'm going to add something from my Google Drive. And in the area under Recent, I have the Future Best-Selling Authors Syllabus, so I will go ahead and double-click on this. And then I will click on Post. Another thing that can be done on this About page is I can invite other teachers to be an instructor in this class. I simply type in the email address. As it says here, teachers you add can do everything you can except delete the class. Over here, you can see that there is a class drive folder that has been created for this particular class and that can help with organizing materials in your Google Drive. In addition, there is a classroom calendar specific for this class. Clicking on this link up here simply opens up my personal calendar. Returning to the stream by clicking on this tab up here, we are now going to look at how to actually post items onto the class stream. Going over to the plus sign, I'm going to first of all create an announcement. You can post to the stream right away, or you can pick a date in the future, or you can save a draft and finish it later. I'm going to share this with the class, and I will advise them Read the posted syllabus as soon as possible, period. And if I want, I can again attach a file, something from my Google Drive, a video, or a website link. I can also choose whether or not I want to share it with all students. Over here, I can enter a topic. Learn about the class. I click outside of it to save it. And in order to post it, I can click on post right away or clicking on this down arrow, I can schedule it for a future date. So let's say I want to post it on September 5th at 8 a.m. I can also change the time here to 9 a.m. Then I can click on Schedule. If I change my mind about when the post goes out, I go up here to Saved Posts, click on it, then I click on the Post Time, Go over here for the schedule, 
and I make the necessary adjustments. But notice that it must always be scheduled for the future. I can always undo the post, copy, and remove, delete. And then I can go ahead and add it live. And now you can see it on the stream. If I want to add an assignment, I go back to this plus sign and click on Create Assignment. I then go ahead and type in the title for the assignment. In this case, Creative Writing Example. And for the instructions, in this example, I'm going to say, create a poem or short story of no more than two typed pages. Again, I can select a topic here if I would like. So I'm going to click on create topic. And I'm going to type in writing samples. And I can go over here and, and create a due date. Let's make it the sixth. I can attach a file, something from my Google Drive, a video or a website link. And then I click on assign. I can also schedule or save this assignment as a draft if I'm still working on it. But I want to go ahead and sign it. And it's now signed. As students complete the work, I can click on this over here to see who did it and who did not do it. And it says here, assignments and questions can be graded out of any number of points or remain ungraded. Since no students have been added to the class yet, or since no students have enrolled in class yet, there is nothing yet to review. Notice that over here I can change the point value. Right now it's set for 100. I can change it over to 10 if I want to. So are you sure you want to update the point value of this assignment? And I'm going to click on Update. Notice that this will be a problem if students have already received grades. But since that doesn't apply, I'm going to click on Update. I can also elect, though, to make this an ungraded assignment. Once the students have been added and start submitting their work, I can sort the students by first name or by last name. Returning back to my main page, also known as the stream, I will hover over this plus sign and move up to create a question. And here I can create a question for my students to answer. I'm going to keep this question very general, like why are you interested in creative writing? I can supply instructions if I want, but I believe the question is pretty straightforward. I can create a due date, I can change the topic, I can decide that it, this will be a multiple choice question or short answer, I'm going to leave it as short answer. I can allow students to reply to each other. Now depending upon your particular class, you may choose to disable this option to prevent any classroom management issues from occurring, and you can either allow or not allow students to edit their answers. And when I'm done, I'm going to click on the tab that says Ask. All right, the question has been submitted and is now showing up in the stream. Thank you for watching this video. Please like it, share it with friends, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you again, and everyone have a great day.